In Climate Watch, record heat seen in parts of Europe last week is expected to move further north this week. According to the Washington Post, the weather system responsible for Europe's heat wave will stretch all the way to the top of the globe. The United Nations says the rising heat could cause record melting of the world's second largest ice sheet in Greenland. Andrew Light joins me now uh, from Washington. He is one of the authors of the 2018 National Climate Assessment and a distinguished senior fellow at the World Resources Institute. Thank you so much for joining us to talk Thank about you, the implications here. So elaborate on just what these higher temperatures mean when we're talking about the Arctic. So in the Arctic, we're looking at three major impacts right now happening. Number one, a reduction in the sea ice in the Arctic. Um, we won't know until September exactly, but this could be the big, the, the, the biggest year for reduced sea ice in the Arctic. So that accelerates it. You get lots of impacts on the ecology up there, on the ecosystems, and potentially um, then an exacerbation of climate change because that sea ice reflects sunlight back out into space. And if you have less of it, of course, then the oceans absorb more heat. Number two is this acceleration of the Greenland ice, cre uh, ice sheet. This is incredibly important. Uh, Greenland and Antarctica is, are the sources of where we're going to see the most reduction of land ice, which is going to cause sea level rise. So it looks like, again, we might be looking at a record year for loss of land ice in Greenland. Already we're seeing um, temperatures spiking at the highest latitudes in Greenland. We haven't seen that really since 2012. That will accelerate sea level rise, which of course threatens all of our coastal infrastructure. And finally, there is this tremendous season they're having in the Arctic for wildfires now, which is also linked to the same group of phenomena. Okay, I want to talk about that in a second, because when I heard wildfires in the Arctic, it, just the two don't seem to go together for me. That's but, right. But so what you're describing to me is this cycle of warming, right? Like the higher the temperatures, the more melting ice. The more the ice, is, ice melts, the higher the temperatures. But where right. did this cycle start? Why are we seeing higher temperatures? We're seeing it because of human-caused climate change. Mm. I mean, if you look at the analysis that was done on this heat dome, this is a heat dome, high pressure system that's been moving north. Started last week in Europe, we saw record temperatures. Paris hit its highest temperature recorded since the 1940s. You had record temperatures across Europe. These all spiked. This is a heat dome that's been pushing away any cool air from the jet stream. It's now moving north. It's gone into the Scandinavian companies now in Greenland, now in the Arctic. And uh, the modeling that's been done on this and the studies indicate that, you know, this is this clearly has the signature of human caused climate change. Some analysis shows that a phenomenon like this is now five times more likely because of climate change. Other analysis uh, puts it as, as high as 10 times more likely because of climate change. This is squarely a, a, a consequence of what we've been doing to the planet. OK, let's talk about the, this forest fire thing, because, you know, we've obviously covered a lot of the forest fires happening out west, right, California. And right. often that has to do with very, you know, years and years of not enough precipitation. The land is dry and it takes almost nothing to sort of start up a forest fire. But that, is that the same issue when we're talking about the Arctic? Because isn't there sort of snow everywhere? Is precipitation a problem? Well, in the summer, you do get fires in the Arctic. That's not entirely uncommon. What has happened is just, again, the rate and acceleration and intensity of it. So, so far, we've seen about 100, over 100 wildfires that the World Meteorological o uh, Organization has been tracking in the Arctic. Um, so we're seeing something like on the order of 2 million acres um, have been burned. They've emiss em emitted on the order of 50 megatons of carbon dioxide. So that's higher than the average annual carbon dioxide emissions from the country of Sweden, which is in the yeah. top 20. And so these cumulative years of drier and drier years means that the conflagrations are just more likely. And this is a harder place, right, to get planes and smoke jumpers and other people into in order to suppress these fires. So they just run. And then do these wildfires, these forest fires also contribute to rising temperatures? Oh, sure. Because again, they are an emitter of carbon dioxide, just like a coal fired power plant. Um, and they, they emit and then they not only are going to increase global warming because that's what a greenhouse gas and that accelerates the warming from that. What's worse, actually, in some respects, is that unlike, you know, a, an electricity plant burning coal or something like that, there's no scrubbers on a forest fire. And so the particulate matter um, the, especially the larger particulate matter that causes respiratory diseases, this has just now formed a cloud that's kind of rotating around 
the northern part of the planet. Um, and this is going to cause um, a, a lot of respiratory failures and cardiovascular disease and all sorts of things that we understand mm. far too well at this point. That's great. And in fact, I want you to elaborate a little bit about that because it seems like it's almost a little bit human nature to not act unless you're being impacted personally by something, right? right? So you hear rising sea levels and people think, oh, that's, you know, 50, 60 years down the road, or I don't live in Florida, so it's not really gonna affect me. But just give us an idea of sort of the, the implications that people don't, don't think about. You brought up health. health. Health is one, and especially not only health impacts writ large, but this is particularly bad on kids. Mm. It's particularly bad on the elderly. It's particularly bad on poor people. Um, it's particularly bad, for example, also just think of these, this is a heat wave, starts off really as a heat wave fundamentally, and you get increase in heat deaths. Now, um, we predict that, or the scientific community predicts that if we could hold temperature increase by, say, 1.5 degrees Celsius by the end of the century rather than two, there'd be around 420 million people on the planet who would be um, who would not be affected by extraordinary heat events like this. So there's a huge difference between acting now and not. But the fact of the matter is, is that I think that people are starting to feel these on the ground. And it's people who are seeing it in terms of spikes in asthma around the world and other respiratory diseases. You're also seeing it in farmers in the Midwest who have been inundated by this terrible season of floods on crops where they can't bring any crop to market at this point because of the floods and because of the extreme rains. And so the polling on this is kind of interesting. It used to be most Americans like didn't think climate change was going to affect them in their lifetime or wouldn't affect their kids. Now half of Americans think that they either have personally been impacted by climate change or they know someone who has. Mm. That could be a tremendous inflection point for how we see this conversation evolve in the United States. Yeah, very true. Andrew Light, thank you very much. Thank you.